the latest tech in second place with a total of five points. Interviews. Look, uh, the most useful product we can at the lowest possible price. Accessibility. I'm loving it and I'm sticking with it. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here and joining us along for the ride. I am Marco Flalo, and before we bring Stephen Scott into the picture, I want to remind you guys how to get in touch with us. It's feedback at ami.ca. That, of course, is our email address where you can send us absolutely anything, whether it's an opinion on something we've talked about or an idea for a show. We welcome that. Again, feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, at Double Tap Canada. That's our username, and if you use the hashtag Ask Double Tap. We will do our very best to get you onto a upcoming show. Stephen Scott, how are you feeling this week? I hope you're all pumped up to talk about the evolution of phones. Oh, I can't wait! I've been I've been digging around in my archive for this one, and uh, I I think you're going to be impressed with this one this week, Mark. You know what, Stephen? I've always said to myself, and unfortunately, I only thought about this in my later years, mm. about keeping all the phones that I've ever had. Because if I think back to all the phones, my very first phone was this Nokia. I couldn't even remember the model. It was a big, bulky phone. It was the first time that, uh, you know, Cantel, which is now Rogers in Canada, uh, was selling this kind of, uh, you know, month to month phone. You didn't mm. have to get locked into a three or four year plan. You could just Pay, go pay 149 for the phone you'd get like 50 minutes there was no texting there was no smartphone data it wasn't even 3g i think it was just gsm at the time not even edge and i remember that was the one that was designed to get us hooked and it did i mean i have had a cell phone ever since that time and if i think about it all the phones I've had since then obviously started because of that moment, but I really wish that I would have kept those phones because it's, it went from bigger to smaller to smaller to like the micro tack and the Motorola Elite to the star tack to what they called the Vader, that little tiny flip. And then they started getting bigger and bigger and smarter and smarter. I'm guessing that it was similar for you because I remember I used to buy a lot of phones from Europe that were unlocked yep. because you guys had the cooler stuff before it even made it to Canada <laughs> or even North America. That's true. Well, I, I don't know about cooler, but certainly we, we, we had the phones. I mean, I've got in my hand here the Nokia 3310. Do you remember that one? Oh, wow. Of course oh, I do. What an amazing little phone. And, and honestly, what, what a lovely little device just to, just to really kind of holding your hand it was called a candy bar style i must admit i've never felt a candy bar this small uh, in my life <laughs> <laughs> and trust me i've uh, felt a few um but no th this is a great phone and of course the most intelligent thing this this phone ever had was snake if you remember which oh, was i remember the, that game remember it? it was so addictive and it, oh, it was such great fun to play and, and you know even as a visual impaired person it was actually not too bad because it was a grayscale screen so you could still see a little bit of what was going on there wasn't a huge amount to go with and as these phones evolved into later life they eventually if you remember they started bringing along uh, internet which was three lines of black text yeah, with a couple, was it, a WAP. it was a i remember it was a WAP browser right wap browser That's right, which yeah. was basically text oh my god the memories you're bringing back continue <laughs> but, but then uh, you know as you move along and I, i'm now showing you the blackberry uh, now this is the blackberry curve i think i'm going to say it's the 9360 i think i'm getting that right um and i love this because you know one thing i loved about the blackberry was the qwerty keyboard and it made it a lot more accessible because you know although you in saying that i've got fat fingers that's one of my big problems fat fingers and um with that you've got to really make sure you let your nails grow a little bit so you can hit the keys uh, but once you've got the typing down once you've got the qwerty keyboard sorted it was a really nice phone to use you could scale up the text as well there was a rudimentary uh, screen reader actually built for this years ago uh, but it never really came really? off yeah it never really kind of got anywhere the company didn't really get it out uh, research in motion as it was uh, then uh, now is it T TCL or Alcatel? Well, it's TCL, well, yeah, isn't it? TCL is making the equipment for BlackBerry. Yeah. But they have, of course, the intellectual property, which includes that QWERTY keyboard, which still to this day, nobody other than BlackBerry has managed to make it feel and work so well. 
It was the only, I mean, of that size, it was the only kind of keyboard I would ever have used. And I just wish Apple had done something like this. But of course, we're way past that now. Um, now, what else did I bring? I, I, honestly, there are so many that I, I was raiding through the box at home and I was, I was getting so excited, spending time, even charging them up, trying to get them working again. It was ridiculous. I know, it is nonsense. Uh, this one I've got is one of my uh, all-time favourites, though. This is the Sony uh, Z770. Um, 7070, I think it was, or Z, is that, am I right in saying that? I, I can't remember. I, you see, this is the joy of not being able to read the screen. You can't tell what the model numbers are unless you remember them. But this was the a flip phone. Um, it has all of the, the standard traits of the candy bar. It's got the T9 keyboard, as you would expect. Starting to get a little bit smarter. It's got the music player built in. It's got some nice little functions to it. Nice calling features. Uh, I think it was one of the first video calling phones, which was terrible. I mean, it was awful back then uh, but you know you could still if you wanted to see a pixelated picture of your mother um, and you know talk to that for a while uh, while it sorted if she, if she had a phone that was similar right if she obviously had one, she yeah. had to have some kind of video phone as well but the next network, networks were I mean at that point the networks were not built to support that amount of data no. the way they are today I mean we were probably at that point talking about an edge browser maybe that kind of speeds yeah. which was what still under a meg up and down and then of course you move on to 2G, then into 3G. And then this little lovely Sony Ericsson came along into my life, which I absolutely adored Sony Ericsson phones. The Walkman phone, uh, remember those? Uh, you would get the Walkman phone and you would have uh, all the wonderful features of being able to download music onto your smartphone or as smart as this was at the time, and you could listen to your music on the go. That was, again, kind of it with your Edge browser, maybe a little bit more functionality, but yeah, pretty much standard. Uh, you know, you could use it as a phone, you could text with it, possibly email as well. You certainly could do that with the, the Sony Ericsson's. But yeah, but there's, there's one issue with all of these phones, one major problem uh, for a lot of people. It didn't affect me at all as I was growing up. It, it would have affected me now if I was at, at the age I am now then. And that is that none of these phones are accessible. So what do you do if you're blind and you just want a simple phone? That's the question. Well, do, do options exist? Because I think back, I'm curious, you know, in your evolution of all those phones, was the BlackBerry the last phone you had before you made a jump to a phone that had a full touch screen? Thinking about it, it probably was. I mean, I've got one of my first iPhones here, which is the iPhone 4. Uh, I didn't jump in right away with the 3. I got the iPhone 4, and uh, I love this phone because uh, it was chunky. Um, it felt like you, you, you'd hurt someone if you hit them with it. Not that I suggest you do that, but um, it was a chunky little phone. It was a good phone. VoiceOver was great on it and everything. And of course, that was the first accessible phone that I had that was something which even then at that time, I wasn't using VoiceOver but it was a, a device which a lot of people were, were coming to because of voiceover. So again, great if you want to get into the world of voiceover, s smartphones and all the joy that was yeah. emerging with that, but it's not a kind of device you would use if you just wanted a simple phone to make calls, send texts, maybe the odd email. Okay, so let's let's fast forward to 2020. We're now sitting here in 2020. One would think that the most accessible phone in the world for someone with vision impairment is going to be a smartphone, right? Yeah. And but that's not and, the case, and, is it? <laughs> well, you're right in the sense that it is because you can buy an Android phone, you can buy an Apple phone, uh, you can buy Synaptic phones, which are specialist mobiles for blind people. You know, those run on Android essentially, but they are you know specialist uh, softwares that run on those devices. Those are great phones, and the, uh, yeah, all of that's accessible. But again, it's not simple. Hang on though, Mark, because I may have an answer coming up for this, uh, which okay. may satisfy everybody. I'm teasing. I love keeping keeping us in suspense. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. That answer is coming up right after we take a quick break right here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you guys for being here. Before we went to a break, Stephen, you threw out the tease. You said that there is another option other than a smartphone for something that's simple and accessible. What is it? Simple and accessible. Two words to describe me in some cases. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the answer to the question. What 
do you get if you want a smart phone in a dumb style, as in the older style? The yeah. old T9 keyboard, you know, all of the things I was talking about before. Essentially, if you want a Nokia 3310 in an accessible form, you want this. This is the Blind Shell Classic mobile phone. It comes in a beautiful black and a beautiful red, according to the company. And what they've done is they have built into this a phone which is fully accessible to blind people. Every aspect of this device speaks. Uh, you can even use voice control. And I, I don't know if it's running wow. off some kind of Android software. It certainly feels like it is. But I, I've got to tell you, Mark, this is the easiest phone to use in the world, and, and it really is. I want to—I haven't switched it on yet because it has the most uh, brilliant uh, startup theme. So I'm going to turn it on now. I'm going to hold up to the camera so you can hear it. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a symphony of sound. Yeah, exactly. It's a beautiful. cacophony of sound. <laughs> <laughs> not, don't ask me to spell that. Um, but yeah, so this is it. This is the Blind Shell Classic. And as it turns on, call one of nine. it automatically starts speaking. So it's just said call one of nine, which That's tells brilliant. me that I've got uh, obviously nine options here. And all I'm going to do is just use a very simple little selector uh, on the uh, middle of the phone, your standard up, down, right, left with the select button in the middle. Uh, I'm going to go right and you'll be able to hear. And if I hold up to the, the phone or the camera, you'll be able to hear what I'm doing here. So as I hold it up, it says call and then if I press it. Messages, two of nine. Oh, messages, okay. Contacts, three of nine. Contacts. More applications, four of nine. Settings, five of nine. Status information, six of nine. Manual, seven of nine. So every single aspect of this phone is accessible, right? So every single thing I'm doing here, every word that's appearing on the screen is being read back to me, which is brilliant. And again, it's got that T9 keyboard. The keys are backlit as well, which is really good in dark light. And of course, it is a black phone that I've got here. So that really helps being able to, if you can still see something, be able to navigate the numbers. Big dot on the five as well, which is really useful. And other than that, you've only got your hang up button and your call button, uh, which are really your navigational aids that's that's really it you use that to you know use your hang up button which is just above the number three to go back a level uh and you can of course place a call uh as well so you know let's let's go through it so if i go through to call no notification turn off the call one of nine uh, and i wanted to call someone again i just press the select button dial contact one of four so i can dial a contact if i have one let's see if i do Oh, I've got Marco Flalo, right, okay. Oh, so I could, I I'm not going to, because it will cost me an absolute fortune to call you across the pond, <laughs> so I'm not going to call you. But I could if I wanted to. I appreciate that. But how cool is that? So I just hit the, the that, That's really neat. And you know yeah. what, I noticed that, so, that that's really interesting is that the sound quality of just that narrator and the speaker is actually quite good and actually sounds better than most of the smartphones that I've heard. And I'm guessing that's you know important, especially because every element of that phone is spoken. Yeah, and this is for people who are elderly. This is for people who are uh, have trouble reading, uh, so dyslexia, uh, or people who just don't like the idea of having a smartphone. It's a much simpler uh, system to use. You can't get lost in this phone. Because if you do, you just press the button above the number three. Dial contact, call one of nine. And I'm right back to where I started, back to call. And I can go and I can do other things. I mean, there's some really cool stuff on here. So if I go through, messages, there's messages, contacts. contacts. More applications, one there's more nine. applications, tools. One of five. tools. Alarm, one of nine. So I've got, obviously got things like the, the basics, the alarm, a minute timer, stopwatch, calendar, notes, voice recorder, built right in, calculator, seven calculator nine. as well. Weather, eight of nine. You can get the weather. Translator, nine of nine. Even a translator as well. I haven't tried that one. Alarm, one of nine. So if I come back out of that Tools, and go five. along one more menu, email, two of five. I can go to emails, media, three of five. media. now in there, music player, I've got a music six. player, internet radio, two internet of radio. YouTube, three of six. YouTube, FM radio, four and of FM six. radio, you'd have to plug in a headset, but you often have to do that with FM radio on uh, any portable device. Camera, five of six. Camera, of course, it's got a camera built on the back as well, so you can take pictures. Images, six of six. You can look at the images you've taken. Music player, one of six. Now, if I come out of that Media, and then go into five. the next menu, books, four of five. there's books vision aids, five of five. and vision aids. And this is where things get interesting. So in there, Color indicator, 
A colour indicator. Now, I get so many questions. Tell me of a great app you can use to detect the colour of something. You know, do my socks match? Does this tie match the, the shirt I'm going to wear? Do you think it should? Or, you know, in my head, it, might, it should be one colour and therefore the shirt should be another. Um, you can use the colour in indicator for that. You've got localization. The phone will tell you exactly where in the world you are using GPS. If I uh, hit the button, it'll tell me exactly where I am. Object tagging. Object tagging. Now, in the box, which I've got here, if I open it up, you've got actually this little, and I didn't realize what this was until uh, just a couple of days ago when I was kind of wondering what this was. There's a little uh, sticker, and, and then here, the, well, actually a, a little page of stickers, and these are all QR codes, right? These QR codes, you can stick to whatever you like. You can then tell the phone to recognize the QR code and you can then give that QR code a purpose. So say for example, uh, you want to know that you're going to have custard with your cake tonight, as opposed to cat food, which I think we'd all prefer. Then on that basis, you can label with the QR code, this is a can of custard. Maybe you get cited help to help you do that. And then the phone, you just pick up and when you want to eat your custard, you hover over the can, which has got the QR code and the phone will say custard it will give it the label you've given it because it's your voice that you give to that. I mean, that is amazing. Now, how much is that phone and where can people actually get it? Is it online online only, I'm guessing? So it's online only. It's not yet available in Canada, although I have spoken to the company. It is coming soon. A price is yet to be given. Uh, just for a, a sense of guide, uh, you can buy this for about three, four hundred pounds in the UK. Okay. So whatever that equates to in Canadian. Um, about five hundred dollars Canadian, yeah. give or take. I mean, when it comes out, depending on the strength of the dollar, it might be around around five hundred dollars. But man, is that a helpful tool to have in your arsenal? And it's the fact that all these apps are built in. You know, you don't have to go and download yeah. them. You don't have to go and find them. Because as much, and this is an interesting thing, right? So having an iPhone is great because you've got all the world of apps to buy and download and, and all that is wonderful. If you know what they are. I spend most yeah. of my life on websites like Apple Viz, spending time trying to you know use other blind people's experiences of apps they've downloaded to first of all check if they're accessible and if they're, if they're gonna be of any use, if they're gonna be something I'd, I'd want. And that's the challenge, whereas it's all built yeah. right into this. Uh, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this device. Would it, it be something that you would actually use? Is it something maybe you would have as a second phone to help you navigate the world a little bit more? Let us know. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. And, you know, if you want on Twitter as well, it's at Double Tap Canada. Stephen, I want to talk a little bit more about it, talk about some of the apps a little bit more in depth. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we will do that and wrap up the show. It is Double Tap TV. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you guys for being here. We enjoy keeping your mind occupied with something other than what's going on in the world today. Email address feedback at ami.ca. And of course, on Twitter, it is at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. Uh, Stephen, we had a tweet from someone named David who writes us, guys, how do you get content on and off a phone like that? And second part of the question here is tell us more about the books feature because it seems extremely interesting well yeah it is so uh, books was one of the menus that i just skipped by in the last segment uh, actually you know it, it is really worth mentioning so if you are subscribed to any of the library services around the world wherever you're watching this in canada it would be the cnib library where you're able to uh, get the books uh, in daisy format now if, mark for a, a, a sighty like you i'll explain what the da daisy is basically it's a collection of mp3 files right so uh, daisy files are uh, numbers numbered uh, files, which essentially is the way that these books are, are laid out. So you can jump to different chapters and different parts of the book and all the rest. But the problem is getting a device to play them and buying a Daisy player is actually quite expensive. So you can actually get around that because a device like this has got Daisy uh, capability to play Daisy books built in, which is brilliant. So this book feature that I'm going to tell you about. So in here, if I just go in, you've got book reader. It will actually let you read the last book instantly. It tells you what the last or 
what last book you could be reading uh, would be and, and it will let you play that right away. Books list two of three. You can look at the list of books three of three. and you can go to your bookmarks as well. So along the way through a book, you might think, oh, I'd quite like to go back to that bit later. Or perhaps you've stopped mid chapter and you just want to re resume there last book, one of three. and then back to your last book. So really simple, Mark. I mean, that's the thing. This is not a complicated device. This doesn't require hours and hours of training. It doesn't require someone to come to your house and explain it. It doesn't require a 500 page manual. You just turn it on. You use those little navigation buttons uh, right in the middle of the phone with that select a button in the middle. Whenever you want to say OK, you just press that and that will take you to the next menu and you just go through that. So it's, it's, it's a level system. You just move through these levels nice and simple. So how do you get a book on and off that device? Is it over the That's, air? Do you need to plug it in? That's the question. So uh, I thought, I hoped you could do it with uh, over the air uh, through Wi-Fi. Uh, that's not possible, it seems. It could be. Um, but uh, I, I've not found that that way around. However, what I have done is I've used the cable. Remember cables, Mark? Do you remember those days? Cables, these... yes, I do remember those do remember things. Them? They look like long <laughs> snakes with different things at the end. Yes, I do. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, in this case, we've got a, a standard micro USB cable. One end pops into the bottom of the phone and uh, the other end into your computer. And what happens is it kind of just shows up like a, a drive on your computer and then you just essentially copy and paste the daisy book you've downloaded from the CNIB library or wherever you've got your book uh, straight onto the phone. And that's it. You just go to your list. It knows where it has to go and it puts it on there and you've got your book and you can take it with you wherever you go. And the great thing as well is a couple of other things just to mention. The battery life on this is going to be a lot longer than you're going to get off an yes, iPhone because it's not course. needing the power. It's not pushing a big screen. It's not you know processing lots of information. It's keeping it really simple. So that means it's less weight on the battery. I think for a holiday, you know, going on holiday, this is the kind of phone I'd want to take with me. There's one other thing though, and I kind of mentioned it up top, and uh, I want to go back to it. Call Mark Aflalo. Call Mark Aflalo. Dialing Mark Aflalo. And there you go. No, no. Uh oh. Well, I'm going to hang up the call. One of nine. But there you go. So right off, I'm dialing you without really wow. any work at all. And you know that's the other thing. So even if you're not so confident at this stage with all those menus, even if it's just a case of moving around the phone slowly, but you want to quickly phone someone, you can do that. Now, of course, you have to add the contacts in first. That's really important. Uh, yeah. So you have to maybe get some help with that initially. But honestly, you can move around this phone so easily, you can navigate around it so easily, and you can always get back to the start really easily. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. I think it's a great little phone, and I'm really glad I was able to talk about it this week. Did you have any help setting it up, or did you do everything by, from scratch by yourself? How dare you even ask that question? Of course I'd help. Uh, no, I, I, I just got on with it. I mean, I just turned it on and I thought, right, okay, let's imagine I know nothing about anything, which is very yeah. easy to do. And um, I, I, I found it really simple because it just appears like this. It just appears with this call option. And I was thinking, call, okay. But the fact it said one of nine tells me, and you get used to this as a voice user, that you often hear about lists and levels and, and you get used to that. And for anyone who's used, for example, a Victor Rear Stream, it's a very similar way of operating. Uh, it's just really, really simple. I mean, you, you can't get simpler than this. And, no, and you, trust you me, I'm a simple person. You, you definitely cannot. Uh, if you guys, again, want to weigh in on this or if you actually have had experience with it, please do let us know. It's feedback at AMI.ca and, of course, on Twitter at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. Uh, thank, thank you, Stephen, for being here. Obviously, this week, great episode again. I uh, hope you guys join us again next week for another edition of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit AMI.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Attar and Marka Flalo. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director production, Kara Nye. Director programming, Brian Perdue. VP programming and production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, Accessible Media, Inc.